All right, so aspects are the 12 basic elements of the universe in Homestuck, and classes are how the characters interact with those aspects. Our next lesson is on classes. If you did not watch my previous video on aspects, I would advise you to do so. All right, so classes are paired off into passive and active pairs. It's understandably hard for some people to figure out which passive pairs to which active class because it's not spelled out in big, easy to read letters like the aspects and their antithesis pairs are. Passive active pairs have something in common with how they interact with their aspect like protection, defense, or destruction. I'm going to be explaining classes within the bounds of passive active pairs to basically open up a better understanding. All right, and then there are gendered classes as well, which I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you what those are as we go into the video. All right, so the first passive active pair I'm going to be explaining is the air and page classes. This pair is the, well, the, well they are the identity classes. Airs have a strong identity with their aspect. They can often be heralded as perfect examples of their aspect. Pages have difficulty understanding their aspect and may have serious mi misconceptions regarding their aspect. John Egbert, the heir of breath, shows a sweeping understanding of his aspect. When his journey began, he had the inherent meaning of breath engraved in his every behavior. But once he reached God tier, he knew what breath meant. Well, after God tier, more like, but uh. Tavros Nitrum, the page of breath, not got tear reached, has serious issues understanding what breath actually is. His team tries to help him gain his confidence, a tenet of breath, but he doesn't understand how to be confident. He never reached God tier, but if he had, he would likely be more powerful than the heir of breath. Witch and Knight. The Witch and Knight pair protects using their aspect. Witches, like heirs, have a lot of inherent understanding of their aspect, but they aren't very confident in their usage of it. Knights tend to present themselves as more herald heralders of the antithesis of their aspect, a common trait among passive classes, but within that heralding, there is evidence of a fondness for their aspect. Damara Medigo, the Witch of Light, god tier not reached, fucks with people through time, and has a very dark personality. If she were to go god tier, she would likely lose most of her anger and malice towards her team. Dave Strider, the knight of time, is very sarcastic and likes to make sarcastic art. He has a dead thing he, things jar, in Jars collection, as he has trouble accepting death, as well as a penchant for being insincere, which is very characteristic of a time play of a passive time player. Once God Tier was achieved, he learned to accept death. Sylph and Maid. The Sylph Maid pair clean or heal their aspect. Sylphs heal their aspects directly, making sure its presence is forever within their team. The journey of a Sylph is quick if she's destined to reach Godhood. Most Sylphs are very mature but need to give up control of their aspect to reach God Tier. Maids make a mess of their aspect. They know how to use it, but do so haphazardly. To reach godhood, maids must mature and learn to be neat. Kaniya Mariam, the Sylph of Space, god tier not reached, was overly controlling and parental over everyone in her session. She never learned to let them go and therefore failed to ascend. Porium Mariam, the Maid of Space, god tier not reached, demands to control various people and acts almost like a bad mommy. She is romantically irresponsible and flaunts her sexuality while also trying to parent various, various people in her session. If she were to become more wholly focused on helping and wasn't so sloppy in her advice, she would go god tier. The self-made pair are two of the female exclusive aspects. Seer and Mage the seer mage pair sees and understands their aspect. Seers have inherent knowledge regarding their aspect and can easily advise on it. To reach god tier, seers need to learn how to shut the fuck up, which is hard for them. Mages have more difficulty understanding their aspect, but are better about helping other people using their knowledge. To reach godhood, mages must be fully enlightened regarding their aspect. Cancri Ventus, the seer of blood, god tier not reached, can't stop talking about treating everyone fairly. While it's a good thing he cares so much, he needs to focus on other things sometimes. A hypothetical mage of blood, 
i.e. someone I know who can fit into the box of Mage of Flood, understood the importance of friendship, but had difficulty keeping friendships lasting. After cutting ties with a great majority of his friends, he realized he needed them and came back. Thief and Rogue The Thief-Rogue pair steals their aspect. Thief deny, thieves deny that they have anything in common with their aspect while simulta simultaneously hoarding it. They are typically selfish with their aspect and need to learn to give it. Rogues are very giving with their aspect and have trouble taking it for themselves. To reach God tier, rogues need to learn to be more selfish. And a hypothetical thief of heart that I know in my real life denies that he has emotional empathy but takes great interest in learning about his friend's personal lives. He bottles up his emotions, denying them until they burst out, sometimes violently. Nepetaleon, the rogue of heart, God tier not reached, helps her friends in emotional endeavors and loves seeing them succeed, especially in romantic relationships. To reach God tier, she would need to take some love for herself. Prince and Bard. The Prince and Bard pair is very destructive. Princes destroy their aspect within themselves and then for everybody else. To reach God tier, princes must learn compassion for their aspect. Bards are a very strong class with a lot of confusion surrounding it. Barbs obfuscate their aspect and hide it within themselves. Usually, something will trigger a bard into releasing their aspect, kind of like a bomb. It's unknown how to reach God tier as a bard. Kurlo's Makara, the Prince of Rage, sued his mouth shut when he was when he screamed and made him his mate spurt deaf. He likely relaxes anger or misunderstandings within his team. In his alternian reiteration, he did a lot of rage murdering. Gamzee Makara, the Bard of Rage not god tier but he'd like to be obfuscated the rage he secretly held within him by using sopor once he stopped the use of sopor he was triggered by icp which made him upset after his rage was triggered he murdered two people the prince bard pair are two of the male exclusive classes and lastly the lord and muse classes these two classes are very special they represent the extreme ends of the passive active spectrum, which I've drawn out here. They are the most dissimilar pair in the whole spectrum. Lords hoard their aspect and destroy their antithesis. Lords are ruthless and single-minded. Muses understand both aspects perfectly and act as protectors of both. Only cherubs can be a lord or a muse because their species both protects entire star systems and destroys them. Their minds are the only ones who could jump to the extremes of lord and muse. Caliborn, the Lord of Time, is the only Norn Lord we have to study. The Lord of Time is dead set on ripping apart space. He cracked and shattered the universe as much as he could before being defeated. Calliope, the Muse of Space, is the only Muse we have to study. The Muse of Space wishes to protect the lives and cultures throughout the universe from her brother, the Lord of Time. Not much is known about her ascension to God tier because her Alpha Self did not ascend. Her offshoot timeline self did. Lord is a male exclusive class and Muse is a female exclusive class. And this concludes our lesson on classes.